Our growing dealer network serves consumers in over 100 countries. And our world-class workforce has the skill and determination to build the best, most exciting products on Earth. BRP focuses on creating more energy-efficient products that deliver proven consumer value. We are committed to the people we serve, to those who help make us grow, and the communities in which we live and work. As writers ourselves, we continually strive to improve the writing experience across all of our brands. From snow to sand, from sea to mountain highway, across the country and beyond, BRP will bring even more thrill and excitement to your outdoor playground through our unwavering effort to create the ultimate power sports experience. The ultimate power sport experience. It's important to understand because it's our DNA. It's a mindset we have. It's an obligation we give ourselves on the support we're going to provide to our dealer network. We are an organization, as you saw, is the power sport industry driven by passion, innovation, and speed. 7,900 employees across the world. And we have a global footprint. For, so we have in red, all the dots is our manufacturing facilities across the world. In yellow, it's what we call B2B, so we have dealers that are selling our product to end consumers. And in green, it's our distributor network that they have their own set of dealers they support. I'm in the after sales department, so our job is to support those 4,000 dealers over 100 countries for everything that is related to after sales questions, parts questions, warranty questions, technical support, consumer experience, litigations, ordering processes, so we really have a really large scale of questions and, and, and support mechanism in, in place so our consumers can drive their, their unit and never lose a weekend. <clears throat> Very quickly, so yes, the video showed who we are, but we have a seven years history. It started with Joseph Armand Bombardi. He started in a little skidoo shop. It, uh, his product was to help take care of his kid that was sick, wanted to travel in the winter. And then we started, in, as an organization, to introduce a lot of new firsts in the industry. So the first snowmobile, the first personal watercraft, the first Canam Roaster that you saw that is now 10 years old. And the reason we're showing this, I'm showing this, is our mindset is innovation. Why am I at Covio's conference? Because we partner with the most innovating firm based on intelligent search and AI. Both Chemistry, both organizations, there's a chemistry, there's a natural relationship between the two of them that makes the project I worked on so successful and making sure that what we offer to our dealer network on tools matches the experience we expect from them on product. <clears throat> so the context of after sales, we are in a global organization with nine offices around the world. I'm based in Quebec, Montre uh, Quebec uh, Canada, which is near Montreal. Hence the beautiful French accent. I apologize for it. I was born with it. Um, <clears throat> and there we have regional offices that takes care of their relationship with the dealer network. And um, this global after sales is roughly 120 employees at the most, taking care of everything that I showed you earlier. So the global footprint and the complexity that we have. And each agent in our call center takes care of each product each, la each line of product, each languages in a way that is not siloed. So it's also a challenge for us to operate. And we operate in a world where I work with what we call a global hub. Very fancy work that says that my job is to own every project, every system, and the service experience at the dealership to support the organization to give a one-to-one -one experience. So in my role and my team, we own the systems that are used in the knowledge center, powered by Salesforce.com. We own the e-learning platforms. I'm owner now of Coveo and the knowledge management processes that comes with it. And all the best practices and procedure that make sure that we support those 4,000 dealers in one identical way, regardless of the way we operate in regions. To do so, we have what we call a four-channel strategy. <clears throat> Knowledge Center, powered, powered by Salesforce.com, is the most important tool that we have that is used for searching the technical knowledge. We have a community 
that is a B2B community where technicians across the world are asking themselves questions and providing answers in a 24-7 basis and removing, obviously, pressure in our call center. If I take this moment right now in, in Canada, in Quebec, it's 6, 15 p.m. Our offices are closed, but in San Francisco, my dealerships are in mid-afternoon. They need support. <coughs> this is where the B2B, the knowledge com center, comes to play. We have a case management system that is powered by Salesforce.com. And <coughs> the third option, uh, the fourth option of the four-channel strategy is written underneath here. It's the phone. We don't like the phone. <laughs> don't call us. Actually, it's the opposite. Dealers don't like to call us. They don't like our accent. They don't like the time we're available. They don't, they, they don't enjoy really the one-to-one -one chatting. And there's a reason behind. They're there to generate revenues. Our organization is there to support dealers, to give customers unit. And the faster they deal with us, it's the time that they will be able to then go back to their organization and generate revenues. Technicians need to wrench. They need to turn ends to make profits. If they spend time in our tools and on the phone with us, it's dollars that are, they are not making. And they get pissed. No phone. <clears throat> I was talking earlier with the B2B uh, community, which is a, 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 an online uh, sharing that, uh, community that has been with us for over five years. Last year, we ever, uh, touched about 3.3 uh, million views of this online community. It's about 33,000 users. There's a lot of knowledge that is bottom-up driven, so users are creating a lot of content that we need to share. But we have the top-down also, where we do the one to 1,000 approach. We have product specialists that take their brains, and what we ask them is feed the machine, which is the knowledge of the community, and push the material as fast as possible so a dealer never has to contact us or a consumer never lose a weekend. High-level view of our project. This is where Caveo comes into play. We, um, in the, in every year that I've been at BRP, I've always been involved in those projects where we need to figure out a way to make the dealers the more and more autonomous possible. And the challenge we had is we really reached a level of incompetencies, both in our teams, but especially at the level of the dealership, because the solution we had was not delivering what they were expecting. They needed advanced training uh, fun uh, functionalities, tips and tricks, and call-outs, and webinars, and we had to explain to them how the knowledge center was working for them to be able to work. So two step back, you're a business owner, you support one, two, three, five, 13 product line at the same time. You don't have to, the time to understand how BRP works compared to Polaris or Kawasaki or Ducati. You just need to do your job. So that's where we realized that we needed to fix this, especially because we have a lot of growth in our organization. Our company is booming. We have more and more dealers in the dealer network. We have more and more product in the field. But we don't have the infinite resources to hire up and up and up our contact center. So we need to fix the basic. So I said 12 languages, clearly an issue for us because every material that we produce generates an issue because we need to create in English and French, but makes it available for German and Spanish. User interface was extremely horrible. Greg, you will remember. One of the best examples I said is when we sold, we were sold the previous knowledge center and search tool, I was sold a castle. It was a beautiful castle that would have an internal courtyard and everything would be perfect and grass and music. And actually I got a uh, trailer, trash trailer, <laughs> with a river that came in between the, the trailer. There was moisture in the building and the walls were cracking. We kept it for three years. We were really sick. So we decided to just take everything, scrap it, start all over again. So once we reviewed that, we knew the issues we had, we, we exposed our organization that we have reached our limit for dealer autonomy, and we really need to rethink the way we operate our business. And, and we showed there was true value to make sure we absorb the, the, the growth and not hire more. We signed an agreement with Caveo, and we started our project. I'm, f I'm a fairly new uh, customer of Caveo. We signed up last May. We started the project, and we did two phases. The first phase was the overalling of the knowledge center. We redid completely the look and feel, and we changed the way we created uh, our documents. Then we went live in October. I came back 
for a period of about two months where we monitored. We used the COVID analytics to understand what was going on. After cleaning up some of our garbage, we had to understand what was the next phase before we introduced the phase two, which was introducing a new source, the community lithium, into the search results and case deflection panel for the dealers that were creating cases. And the reason we did it in two phases is if Covio was not doing their job correctly, meaning us, we could not push articles in case management because we would just push garbage again, right? So we, we went fairly carefully in our project. The team project was a really massive team. So on BRP side, it was me with my ISIT uh, counterpart. And on the Covio side, there was probably two resources, which was a PM and a dev. We were helped left and right, but pretty much a project of four people delivered on time, on budget, and I would like to say over scope. Famous quote from a very famous, a famous person. <laughs> in my project, in my business case, I had created the line that says, but well, there's a typical line that says training. And on that line, it was $50,000 of training that was forecasted. Why 50,000? Because we need to create videos for the inner network. It needs to be translated in 10 languages. There was a need for a communication plan. So obviously the costs are massive. And I took that line and scrapped it. And I put my head on the, uh, on the chopping block and told my boss, I will not do training. I was one behind all the trainings in the past. I said, if we're not able for new users to use this tool like you're using Google, we have failed our project. You just fire me. It makes no sense to invest $50,000 on training documents because we just went too complicated. So I took that $50,000 and assigned it more for projects and initiatives. And, and I'm still hired, so <laughs> I, it worked. I was really challenged by the upper management, VP, VP, GMs, because they're just saying, you need to understand those are business. I understand that they are business partners, but they invest millions of dollars. You need to give them a heads up. They, nope, no training. It needs to be dummy proof. I did not do training. <clears throat> Sorry. So that was our previous knowledge center. Yeah. <laughs> What's to say about it? It's dead. It's dead. The knowledge article were on the left side, mixed with product information, and well, the right hand side is product information. Advanced search feature was needed all the time, and it was a mix of serial driven and keywords. So the best way to explain how it works now and understand the no notion of serial number is you saw we build products, and everything we do is tagged, is identified to a product itself, a serial number. So it's identified to a Skidoo snowmobile, and then we attach the documents specifically for that VIN document. So the dealer, when he sees a document, he doesn't, under, he doesn't have to guess, does it apply to this unit or not? We do the work for them prior, and then we push the material accordingly, and we do the maintenance through time. And this is a challenge, because obviously, as we create material and create material, the dealership re needs to be the end user that we remember. So we changed it to a new knowledge center, and we decouple, so if I go back, this is one tab, VIN information and articles, and then we split it. We went with a VIN information page, serial number driven page that identifies the history. So if you take your car to a dealership and get ask your name, they see, you, they see in that one page everything that goes on. Product, your name, is there campaigns needed to be performed? And then they have the article tab, which is another session but just for the articles that are re related to the serial number or not. The best way will be, once I'm done with this, yep, will be to show you the new look and feel and how we operate it in there. So major improvements, as I said, two pages, one dedicated for the unit history, the other one is just the article page that we filter through the facets and, and the different queries. We kill the concept of advanced search, right? We can, we completely decided that the previous advanced search functionalities we had was not necessary. And as well, we challenged ourselves to make this as dummy proof as possible because my dealers are mechanics primarily. They don't, they're not computer savvy and they don't like to spend time in front of a computer. So keep it simple. 
change the visual support to help identify the type of articles or the type of results that are coming. So at least visually, globally, no translation. They understand what we're proposing to them. Obviously, we use the power of Coveo to help boost the results, leveraging machine learning as much as we can. Advanced analytics is probably one of the biggest pleasure I have in my day-to-day -day is to have this analytics in our back, uh, back pocket because now we truly understand what's going on in the dealer network, what they're looking for, and what's going on in the Pacific today will occur four months from now in, in North America. So we are able to really be proactive on the way we create material in our support or the internet. And we have a thesaurus of over 5,000 words to compensate the way we operate with the challenges we have as a NOIA. Demo. I forgot to say, as I said, I'm French, I speak fast. My brain thinks fast, but I can't slow down. So raise your hand, stop me, challenge me, ask questions. So we're in the knowledge center. I'm a dealer. So Boss Web is our portal, pretty much, that our dealer uses to interact with BRP on a day-to-day. -day. That's the, their interface to place orders or, 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 or to do after-sales activities. In there, what, what we have is the VIN serial number. That, that box is powered by Covid. And in that page, we have the VIN history report that shows pretty much everything that goes on on that vehicle. So I have the vehicle information. So the dealer knows that it's a specific Roadster with it's yellow, it has a 991 engine in it and understand it's sold for a market. There's, it's in the end of the consumer that we have the consumer info information on the right hand side. Is there recalls with it? At that moment, there's nothing really measured per se in the analytics with just that we know who's coming in and what he's looking for, but we have integrated along the way I'll call it little triggers to understand what they're looking for. And we are already filtered on the right hand side the quick links that are specific documents related to the road center vehicle. So Coveo is helping us at that one point, especially the operator's guide or PDI bulletin when we click on it, brings me the document specifically for the roadster. Campaigns, well, a great dealership We'll look at your serial number and make sure that, oh, there's a safety recall related to your vehicle. So let's make sure we book you an appointment and we fix it. And then we have the history of the unit and if there's any case related to us. So far, so good. Then where the fun begins, documents and article. In documents and article, as you can see here, I still have all the Roadster information that carried over from one tab to the other one. So now everything that go you're going to see on that specific page has already been filtered for that specific product. So if I do a, 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 a search vibration, already we have a query suggested based on dealer's input. <coughs> We're going to see articles that are specific for that vehicle, that is a bell vibration, a handball, handlebar vibration. And then when you click on it, you get to the Knowledge Center article that is powered by uh, Salesforce.com. We also integrated a few facets. So I said we wanted to keep it very simple. So we have two sources, the knowledge and the community. We have way too many article types. That's another project that we have, but that we classify the articles. And why I'm saying way too many is we have 27 article types right now which is completely bad practice. But we didn't have Coveo because when you look at it from our business standpoint, the dealer doesn't care of what's the article type. You have a document, he just wants the document. Where he needs to find it, that's your problem. That's not his problem. But we're gonna do a cleanup in the near future. We've created some facets for identifying the project, uh, the product. So with cool behaviors in it, if I'm looking for a schedule an article, a new facet appears and helps me to sort it by model year. So along the way, it refines and the languages, obviously. But the languages, we, we went very fancy. We, we've put a spin on it is everything we create is English. So if I'm, if I'm English, I'm going to only push you English results. But if I'm Spanish, I'm going to push you Spanish article first. And if you don't have the equivalent, I'm going to push you English. So then you can use Google translation to allow you to get the articles. 
So we are playing with those functionalities to make sure that the dealer, if he, he wrote Spanish, a Spanish word or Eulek in German, it understands that it's an Eulek and then it'll push me the article that is an Eulek. And the, the, the other cool feature is just the speed, 0 .37, 0 0.37 seconds. That means that Laurent did a great job with his team because it's really, really quick. All right. It used to be, what, four seconds? Uh, it's more than that. You could, because the weight was a great question. Great question, Craig. The old design, the full page could take up to 30 seconds to load because you had SAP calls in the back end for the VIN inf information, and then you have all the back end information articles that needed to filter. And that is if you had an optimal con internet connection, because now I'm dealing with dealers. A dealer is not necessarily set up as an IT shop, so you, I, I dealt with dealers. I took my cell phone, I was in their dealer location, and we did the same search, one, two, or three, go. 30 seconds, I had my information on the laptop of the dealer, bad Wi-Fi on the other side of the building with a bad service provider, two minutes and a half, the page would load. BRP, you suck. Well, no, no, no. at that point, it's your problem. But 30 seconds was not acceptable, right? It's, it, it was our problem. Yeah. All right. Yep. So every, every VIN has their own identification number to which they all have their own separate stories and separate articles that are tied to it. No, you cannot success, suggest VIN. You suggest articles through a VIN. Okay, but since you have hyperhead for a VIN number, uh, oh, it's it's re so it's a, a widget that we created that are recognized the previous VINs a dealer will enter uh, will type in. So the five previous serial number that the dealer typed is kept in, in the cache memory of the browser. So the next time he comes in, maybe 15 minutes later, he doesn't have to type the 13 digits because as you saw, it's letters and 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 uh, numbers that are mixed. So we leverage Coveo, as I said, 5,000 words thesaurus in 12 languages. We really, instead of putting the tags or the information in the articles in the metadata, we did it to put it in the forefront of the, the, the tool. So we remove ourselves our pressure to maintain the articles tagging. And now I just have one source of information. And yes, Japanese and Chinese is a really good challenge for us because it's a growing market, yet we are not, we don't have that information and those documents all created in that language compared to English. So that thesaurus plays an important role when you get in your go-to market strategy. Through the thesaurus, we also created what we call the typos and regional differences. So BUDS is our diagnostic software that we use. So some, it's, a, it's a diagnostic tool that you plug on the unit. But we have found through the analytic that it has been typed 12 different ways. So regardless of how you're gonna play, you're gonna type buds, we're gonna push you the right article now. We understand that you don't know how to type buds, we'll take care of it, we'll fix it. And the same types of, of way you're gonna type power steering with spaces, not not spaces. Our, our dealerships are mechanics. They are not there to use a dictionary. They're just trying to find information. So this is where the thesaurus really helps us in their relevancy story, because at, at that point, we're <laughs> removing pressure from the end users. Well, well, at that point, you, 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 it, doesn't, it doesn't matter anymore, but you, you have some of those weird stories where there's caps and not caps and spaces and not spaces. And so, all right, where do we stand? A few metrics, not because I don't want to brag, but I'll brag. <laughs> I have the Covio staff in the room, so I'll brag. Um, so after for eight months, we have an average of 14,000 users connected in the knowledge center, uh, 2.6 million queries so far. We have significant traffic. Obviously, every serial number are tied by our dealership network, and then they're looking for um, ad additional information. And we have a great split between the knowledge and all of the other tools, including case deflection. Machine learning is at 44% right now, which is not to my level of satisfaction. So uh, I'm going to challenge my colleague, Geneviève, on yeah, she's going to have to do overtime to help me understand why we're only at 44%. It's not that bad, but for me, I want it to be better. The reason is, again, is the, 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 the better service I offer to my dealership, the more money they make. Simple as that. Uh, next. So just a cool, there's a map that shows the country. This gives us an idea. Obviously, most of the traffic is North America, but 
50% of my product are sold in North America, where the rest of the world is 50%. The challenge with that is, as I said, it's the uh, seasonality between our product and our, uh, the way we operate. So what's going on on that side of the world in the summer for us is winter for them. We'll, uh, we'll take care of six months later. So we use that as a leverage to create material. <clears throat> a few KPIs click through, we're at 57.5%, we went up to 60%, so it's my understanding that we're pretty much one of the best uh, benchmark right now at Covio as a click through. So at least we know that when people are looking for information, they find something, they consume information. And our, the articles they're looking for is normally within the top three. We're trending at 2.7 right now, so we're pretty satisfied with that. It means that all the decision we took in the back end and, and the business decision that we, we challenge ourselves is, is paying off because they're really finding information in their, in their screen. We see great metrics and, and we see that people will consume articles when they see it in the panel, but the, the percentage and the volume is not to where I would like it to be because the more cases I have, the more traffic I need to generate on the call center aspect of it. And just an example, yes, we have about 130 case that would be deflected, but that for me is not, it's not acceptable at this point. It's more, it's not a challenge of the tool, it's a challenge for us to better educate our dealers, but also to make sure that it's relevant. And the article that we're finding right now probably is not adequate for their type of searches compared to the knowledge center. Do, do that make sense? Really clear in my brain. It's awesome, okay. <clears throat> How we did achieve those fantastic metrics? We went to a methodology that, uh, powered by BRP, it's called the top 25. It's a, it's a science that we created internally that says, we're gonna look on a weekly basis on the top 25 articles or, or queries that has no results. And we're gonna force our teams and we present that information to those teams and says, here's what our dealer network is looking for. Please tell us why there's not information in that system. Create the knowledge and then promote it through the community. And then we track it and we measure it. So we have a weekly governance which captures the gaps in Coveo in the lithium community and case management, uh, where we also are looking to, uh, to uh, deploy, not deploy, but use a key text analysis as well, as well to aggregate that information. We have weekly action plans to drive and, and, and cover those gaps. So it's fun to have analytics, but what do you do about it? And then how do you measure your success? We have an internal KPI in our uh, director's uh, scorecard and VPGM that says we're going to measure community adoption, making sure our dealers are using the tool and the knowledge center usage, then the, the VIN page and the case management. So we commit ourselves to increase those ratios as high as possible because it means less volumes and it means, yes, savings are in our, in our business, but more revenues or autonomy at the dealer level. And we have a, a tracking mechanism that allows us to know <coughs> the changes we made and see the impacts. So yes, we can change and do ch uh, on-demand changes in Coveo, but for us it's important, and Patrick, which works in my team, is the mastermind behind the, the, those changes, is to make sure that in, at the end of the day, we're not just doing changes without a true insight on the benefit for the organization. Key message. I said no training, I did not deliver training, and, and the mindset, although we created, and it's fun when you start those projects because you have those paradigms and you says, well, we're gonna create views they can filter from page one to five, and, and can they expand to 100, and, and if they filter by X, we're gonna view, uh, create a view like V, and well, no. If it's not on page one, you just fail. Go back to your drawing board, so do your own work, and, figuring out where there's a gap. That's what's really the story behind the success of the Knowledge Center, is the right science, the right processes, and the right people put together, and then driving great results. And, and our dealer network feedback that we received since the go-live is it's fantastic, because now they say, it was about time you fixed your backyard. And now what is fun is we only see progress. We can introduce changes on demand, we can increase the, kind of the material created and they see it the next day, instead of trying to guess if what they're seeing is good. So what is the next step for us? I didn't show you in my demo because I went too fast, all excited, but we have case. We have case management, which we create articles, 
Uh, this ins <coughs> this uh, use case is a great example from uh, our friend at GoPro, where we, I'm stalking, I was talking their website on a daily basis to uh, order issue. So let's say I'm a dealer and I have or an order issue, then the panel on the right hand side will push results along the way. So the next phase for us is to push the same panel. So for those that attended the, se the session this morning with uh, with uh, Craig <coughs> and the uh, Coveo team, we'll introduce that in case management uh, internally. And then we're going to take Coveo science and see what's next. How can we use that AI and push that story further? How can we take this and introduce it on our website to track and understand the consumer behavior? How can we predict parts ordering based on previous input. So if a dealer is doing an order or is looking for a repair, it may mean you need part A, B, C, D, and E. Can we not propose articles, but propose shopping carts? But diagnostic is an infinite source of information. How can we tackle that and fast track our diagnostic process? So there's a lot of ideas behind. Just not enough hours in the day. Yes? Nope, not for now. It's an idea that we will look at. Um, I'm personally challenged by it because I never use it. I'm not a great example. It doesn't mean that people are not using it, but yes, and I saw it on, remember Pat, on what screen I saw it? There was a little widget that says, uh, was that useful, yes or no? I, whatever, Adobe or whatever. So we may <laughs> introduce it, but my true measure is, did I receive a case or not? If I have a case, I got my answer. Any questions? Yes, sir? I was wondering if after activating like, your website and analytics, you have some kind of epic selling moment or aha moment of realizing something that you like, didn't realize before, enabled by what you saw. It, you thank you for your question. It confirmed what we already knew with tangible metrics. Uh, it started not at the go live, it started when we, do, we were doing our uh, UATs, our tests, before going live. I knew that our knowledge base and the way we measure our metadata and our tagging was a, it was a mess. Years and years of different practices and individuals that were operating on their different ways. And when I was doing my UATs and I was looking at the result, I was like, oh my God, we cannot go live and push those type of results to a dealer network because now it's going to be really obvious. If you remember the previous screen, the articles were hidden on the left hand side. So if it was not relevant to a serial number, you didn't really know. Now, Kaveo is big. In your screen, it says, Evan wrote and I'm looking for a roadster. It doesn't apply. So that a KPI analytics and the UI kind of showed us that we had a lot of homework to do internally. So we had to turn and do a massive cleanup. And now today, we understand really what dealers are looking for. Yes, we can go to the very granular and look at the session of a user up to their 27 clicks and why they didn't find anything. But more importantly, we can regroup information and now we're doing our reporting per regions. We can do trending. What goes on in Quebec will be different than what goes on in Utah. So that's a different behaviors that we need then to look at it on the product perspective. That product perspective is bring back engineering into play. So the issues that are raised on our side are then transferred to engineering to improve the quality of the product. That then generates quality improvement, recalls, new parts, whatever. So, so we have now a, a solid toolbox. So it's a really long answer, but am I okay? Okay. Yes, sir? Uh, about that, uh, for example, with the, the case collection uh, or panels you have, uh, what is, so you said that you, know, you want to kind of pump up the number of, for, for case collection. What is the strategy? So when you see, for example, a content gap, uh, do you create results? Do you, have you ever created content because you realize Created that? content. Primarily, this is where the feedback mechanism, I, I showed you the top 25. This is where I'm going to, so this is a packed question, parts, accessories, and clothing. I'll turn to my buddy Richard and says, Zaksha, your dealer network are looking for part one, two, three, four, five. We have five queries at the same part today. There's something going on. Investigate and come back to us. And then there might be a temporary solution, which is a post on the community. Since it's supposed in the community, it's still fed by Coveo in the back end. So the next dealer that comes in can go to the community and find a temporary solution, or we're going to create a real article. It's, so this use case is a post on the community. <coughs> I know it by the logo. <laughs> but 
I have another issue, then we know that we have an issue on Boss Web right now. So a dealer that is about to go in and I'm not able to place my order in starting to log a case, Oop. we're aware, don't call us, we'll fix it. Or we create articles. We're alive. So we create articles. So it's really the key and it's always a process that was in place at BRP because we're dealing with product and human lives. So it's important we understand what they're looking for and we find the right solution. But the processes are the ch biggest challenge because you need to sustain it through time. Question, comments? You're free of 10 minutes. Oh, oh, oh Jen, yeah? I, was, I thought you had something else. No. Yes. Yep. Tomorrow night. Yes, sir. Curious, did you do some analysis on like the cases that went through? Because obviously, I mean, you have a good click through, so you have a good self service success. Yep. So maybe some people just don't get to the case of action page, so you get more complex cases. Like, have you done an analysis on were these cases deflectable with you, the knowledge? And, uh, and, and partially, yes. Um, there are some case types it, it's easier to achieve. A technical support case type is really easy to know because you know that if there's material in it, they just didn't read it or use it. Parts is a different science because parts could be article or could be related to our other system that only a BRP employee can convey that message. Now our challenge is to say, can we create a temporary solution for them until we connect directly in that system, right? It's a finding the right balance. So, and this is where starting to use the analytics of Coveo and also extract every word from every case and in every case type and start to do trending will also allow us to really make sure that we feed the machine like it should be. All right, well, thank you for your time. I really appreciate it.